Hey Skillshare babes, welcome to my series of Photoshop classes on Skillshare. Um, my name is Meg Lewis. You probably know enough about me from the bio that you saw on Skillshare. Um, so uh, let's just dive right in. Our first lesson here is on resolution. And I'm going to go a little bit over and beyond on all of the conversations and sections taught throughout this class and throughout the entire series. Um, the way this series works is each of the classes are independent of one another. Um, and you are welcome to take the classes that you think apply best to you, but you will get the best experience uh, if you take all of the classes in their uh, s sequential order. So um, we might be learning things along the way, and if you just hop into a random class at the end of the series, you might miss some important things. And we're going to dive pretty deep into all of the things along the way, so it's really important that you just, you know, kind of take them all, and each class is about, you know, an hour or so worth of videos, so it's not really going to take up a lot of your time, but um, you, we will be covering a lot of information. Okay, so let's dive right into resolution. So let's talk about what exactly resolution is and what you need to know here. Okay, so let's take a look at Photoshop here. Um, I mentioned this before, I am using Photoshop CS6 right now. Um, sometimes I use this one, sometimes I use the Creative Cloud. Uh, so what you need to know is that the Creative Cloud is a monthly or annual subscription-based service that Adobe offers. Um, if you downloaded the trial, you probably have a Creative Cloud trial. Um, the CX6 is actually the newest version of Photoshop if you buy it separately, and I want to use both just so that I show you guys the difference between the two because they're basically the same, but they are two different things. Um, they have all the same tools, it's just that C Creative Cloud is a subscription service that updates on its own, whereas uh, CS6 is the disks that you actually buy separately um, in a store. So. I'm using CS6 for right now, but I might switch back and forth between Creative Cloud just so that you guys see the difference. And again, they're pretty much the same. Um, I would highly recommend just getting a Creative Cloud membership if you don't mind spending the money. It's cheaper because it's just a fee every month, a smaller fee. Um, so, and the nice thing about that Creative Cloud is that it updates every time there's an update to the software. So you don't need to spend hundreds of dollars um, each time a new Creative Suite comes out, it will just update automatically for you, which is really, really nice because they do release new ones quite often every couple of years, and each time there are new features. So rather than spending all that money each time, you can just get that Creative Cloud membership and it will update on its own. All right, enough of me blabbering, so let's get right in. This is Photoshop again, CS6, as you see right here. Um, so let's just create a new Photoshop document here. So I'm going to go File New. And you see that we get this handy little window that pops up. You'll probably have different numbers right here. Um, this is just saved what I did last time I was in Photoshop. So if you have different presets there, it's absolutely fine. We're going to customize this for ourselves. So he up here you have your file name. So uh, we can name this whatever we want. Let's name it whatever we want. Again, I don't put spaces in there just because it's good file naming conventions, and I will dive more on that in a different lesson. Okay, so again, this lesson is about resolution, and you really need to know what resolution is before you even create your first Photoshop document. So um, right now, I have it set to a pixel width of 1200 and a pixel height of 1200, and obviously that is going to be a square. Um, but we need to figure out first what all of these things are. So we have pixels and inches, which are the primary things that I use and that most people use in their day-to-day -day life. Um, so uh, I, I'm going to explain to you a little bit about the difference between pixels and inches. So pixels are anything that you need to design for the web that includes mobile devices as well will be in pixels. So um, that's anything basically for the web or for the screen. So anything you're looking at on a computer screen and you won't be printing out for any reason, you'll just want to use pixels. And if you want to print something that your primary focus for that is to be printed, you'll definitely want to go with inches. Um, for this class, we'll be doing a lot of things in pixels only because this is an internet-based class, so we'll be looking at everything we're doing on screen. So I'm going to use pixels for everything. And I am primarily a web designer in my job, so I usually use pixels most often, but if you are a print designer or a photographer or somebody who really needs to print their stuff out a lot, you'll probably use inches more often. So inches again, if I click inches here, you'll notice that it says width of 16. It kind of tries to convert those 1200 pixels into an inch uh, that's closest. So we have 16.667 inches is the same 
in Photoshop as 1200 pixels. Let's go back to inches. So if I wanted to create an eight and a half by 11 uh, piece of paper document, I would literally go eight and a half width and then 11 height and make sure that these are set on inches. So again, with printing, um, there are two color modes. There's RGB color mode and CMYK color mode, and we'll go more in that, dive deeper into that in our color lesson. But for now, I just want you to be familiar with this entire creating a new document panel here. So um, if we were creating a document for the web, we would want CMYK. Or, I'm sorry, if we created a document for the web, we'd want RGB, not CMYK. CMYK color is for printing. So again, if we're doing inches, we always want to have it set on CMYK because we're printing. And if we're designing for screens and for the internet, we'll want to put it on pixels and RGB color. Now these other colors, you really don't need to know much about. Grayscale obviously just keeps things in gray if you need that for any reason. Um, I usually just mess with the grayscale settings in my printer, um, which is the only time I usually print grayscale is if I'm going with a printer and I can just do that during printing settings. So really just RGB and CMYK is all you really will ever need to know. Um, so as for resolution, resolution is generally only important to know if you're designing for screens and for the web. Um, so anything you're designing for screens in those pixel format, in the RGB color, you'll need to know a little bit about resolution. Now resolution is how large your document is and how many pixels wide and how many pixels tall it is. So there are some common resolutions that we use here in web design and also in designing for various devices if I were de designing for an iPhone for instance. There are common resolutions. Um, so if I was designing for the web, there are a few standard dimensions that you need to know. Um, back in the day, websites used to always be 960 pixels wide. I'm going to type this in here, 960 pixels wide. Um, that is a very, very common width for websites. And it is kind of not very wide at all, um, but it's a safe width for websites um, that can be viewed on any size of laptop or desktop computer, which is why 960 is a good number. Um, now, for websites, you can make websites as tall as you want. We have a general rule where if you want to keep things above the fold on a website, which means that it is above the point of where you have to scroll down. So if I opened up a website, it's all of the things I see right from the beginning before I'm scrolling down is above the fold. So if I want to keep things above the fold, I would make my document 600 pixels high. So 600 pixels in height is how much we have to fit in above that scrolling point, above the fold. So, okay, now we have a website that's 960 pixels wide by 600 tall. If I create that document, you're going to see this is 100% um, of the size, and it's pretty small. Um, this is just a really great size of a website if you have a very, very tiny laptop. So if you have one of those really small 11 inches or maybe smaller laptops, um, the size will be viewable for those people. Um, but then think about if I was using a 27-inch uh, desktop computer. This would be really very small. So I highly encourage that you always make your websites taller than 600 pixels. Uh, that 600 pixel height is just safe for what's above the fold. And people obviously love scrolling these days, and keeping things above the fold isn't as important as it used to be back in the day. Um, but again, I'm just teaching you about resolution, so 600 uh, pixels tall for resolution is, is okay, uh, but you can absolutely make them taller. I, ne I don't think I've ever made a website that's only 600 pixels tall. Um, but 960 pixels wide is very common again. And another uh, dimension in width that is also popular for creating websites, let's create a new document, um, is 1020 pixels wide. That just goes along with the standard dimensions of your um, screen. So 1020 is a nice ratio to fit within your screen. So again, uh, common resolutions for websites are 960 pixels wide and 1020 pixels wide, uh, 1020 pixels wide. Um, okay, so let's move on to an, a different kind of device, which is the iPhone. Today, as I'm recording these tutorials, the uh, iPhone 5S is the most recent iPhone, and there are specific dimensions for that, and it's 640 pixels wide. I'm going to type this in here. 640 by 1136 pixels tall. 
Now you'll see when I press OK and I zoom in to where this says 100% down here. I'm going to zoom on in. I'll teach you guys how to zoom later and I'm going to teach you how to do all of these things. You'll see this is 100% in size and it's huge. It's so much bigger than your iPhone is. Um, so I'm sure you're wondering why it's so large and it's definitely a challenge when you're designing on this size when your phone is so small because you have to figure out what the size of text is that would be best. And the reason why it's so big is because your your phone, iPhone 5S, is retina screen, which means that it has a lot of pixels packed in there. So you really need to design it really big so that it can look nice and crisp when it's so small on that retina screen. And again, if we wanted to create a new document and we were designing for an iPad, common resolution size for that is really big. It's 1536 pixels wide by 2040, oops, sorry, by 20. 48 pixels in height and that is obviously very large. Let's go to 100% again Look how big it is. It's going off of my Photoshop canvas. It's just huge so uh, Resolution is something very important to know and if you have to look up resolution in the future because you aren't sure what the size of it is um, Android for instance has a lot of different devices which all have different resolution sizes Which is uh, that's exactly why I'm not telling you what they all are now. Uh, there are so many um, but if you ever need to look up a, re a resolution size on your own, just go right into Google and search for, you know, you can do Android resolution sizes, or if you have a specific Nokia device name, you can search for the resolution size of that. It's all quite easy, but at least you know what resolution is, and um, as we move forward, you'll be very comfortable dealing with different resolutions.